Hey guys, check out this custom table a customer brought to us. We upscaled it. So we had this customer bring us this coffee table and they want us to make an epoxy bottom for the bottom of this coffee table. So we're gonna cut out the three quarter inch MDF. We're gonna epoxy over the top and then set it inside that coffee table. So what I did is I've already pre-cut all my strips uh, for my templating. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hot glue them together and then make a template. That way I know exactly what size I need for the cut. This is utility plywood from a big box store. And I just cut it into two inch strips. And then I use this because it's a little, it's more sturdy than the regular templating material that we use. So I like to use this in, in this kind of scenario. So because this, this angle iron is crooked, you can see here it's off maybe about 3 16 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in here with another piece and put it right where it needs to go and then I'm gonna glue it down. That way it'll give me the crooked cut that I need to make. Just like that, now we have a template that's gonna fit perfect for this piece of furniture. Okay, so here we go. Starting the project, three ounces per square foot of stone coat countertop regular epoxy. The reason I'm doing regular as opposed to our art coat is because I'm doing darker earth tone colors. If I were doing white or lighter colors, I would then use the art coat. All right, so I'm gonna take you through each one of these colors and uh, they're beautiful. I get these colors from uh, a very good friend of mine, Erica with Artist Till Death. She is located in Dallas. Check out her website. There'll be links in the descriptions of the video. And also on my website, there'll be links to these products. All right, so first of all, uh, let's do here. Let's start with Chestnut. Now this is a Just Resin product. It is a paste and is absolutely gorgeous. Look how dark that is, isn't that beautiful? And I tell you what, these colors, mix like butter into the epoxy. What you wanna do is to check your opacity is to pull your stir stick out and see if you can see the grain of your stick. I like that. And we'll go to the next color. All right, our next color is going to be chocolate brown. Now this is a really rich, rich chocolate. It's also a Just Resin product. And it is beautiful. So you can see it's really dark compared to the chestnut. That's kind of what the customer wanted on this piece with some darker earth tones. So that too was a metallic color. Now, this is a really cool color. Now, this is not a metallic. It's called Dark Earth. It's a very neutral color. And it is a non-metallic because I want this finish to have both metallic and non-metallic colors in it. This is the Just Resin product. Almost looks like what I would call milk chocolate. So you can see the difference in the two. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna start adding a little bling to the show here. Now this is a product that's called Golden Autumn and it's a dry paste and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I've already mixed up just a little bit because I wanted to kind of see what it looked like before I used it. So I'm gonna really load that up. That is really pretty. Now I'm gonna be using this more of an accent because honestly, it's got a little bit of a red tone to it and I don't wanna to get too red. It's very bronzy, I guess I would call it, not really red. 
But look how easy that mixes. So you can see a little bit of a red tone compared to the browns that we've mixed up. But that's going to give us some really cool depth. All right, then we have um, our accent colors. We're going to have a couple of really different accents. This is a product from Lorez, also available from Erica at Artist Till Death. It's a lot like the Just Resins. It's just a different brand. Beautiful. And this is Misty Green. Then we're going to come in with a tiny bit of copper. Now this copper is a copper that's going to stay on top of the epoxy. It, it has a tendency to kind of float. And I'm just going to use a tiny bit. It can really take over a piece if you put too much. But it is an amazing product when you just want a hint of that copper that looks like you can just really reach out and touch it. It's so pretty. Look at that. Looks like a real piece of copper metal. All right. Now, the last thing we're going to do, actually two more. I'm going to come in here. Now, my very favorite brown in the whole world is our Alumalite Brown Opaque Dye. I absolutely love it. I like it because we can make it transparent. And I'll show you by just putting one little drop. Or you can turn around and make it very opaque. Now this is just one little drop. It's stuck on my stick. <laughs> this is one drop and look how transparent that is. So I really do like that. But for this particular finish, I do want to get a very opaque finish or opaque sheen, I guess you would call it. All right, so this thing will cooperate with me. I'll get some more color in there. All right. So you can see by adding a few more drops, now how opaque that is. But what I'm going to do is because I already have some very, really pretty dark browns, I'm going to take this brown and I'm going to deepen it even more by adding one small drop of the black opaque dye from Illumilite. Literally one drop. <laughs> because I don't really truly want a black, but I want a really deep, deep color. And that is really pretty. All right. Okay, so all of these so far have been liquid. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with an actual mica powder. These um, mica powders are from Stone Cone Countertop. I do sell them on my website. But because it's a powder, what I wanna do is uh, I wanna add a little bit of our new product. It's a thin dispersion. And I'm gonna add about a capful into the epoxy before I add my mica powder. Because what this is gonna do it's going to help to just absolutely make this powder stir in like butter. And it'll help prevent any of those little uh, fish eyes or fish tails, they call them sometimes, when your mica powders aren't mixed up thoroughly. Look at that. Look how easy that was to, to, to mix. All right, so we prepped the MDF with two coats of the Stone Coat Countertop Black Undercoating, sanding lightly in between the coats and then giving it a light sand before we're pouring. All right, so here it goes. Let's start laying these colors out. Gonna start off with our bronze mica first. Everything is going to be very random in the way that we pour. Here is our Alumalite dyes. This is the black and the brown mixed. Coming in with the dark earth now. You can really see the difference in these colors 
when you lay them down next to each other. Now the chestnut. All right, so I'm gonna save my um, accent colors for the last, for the end, after we meld them together. Uh, but this is our chocolate brown. All right, isn't that crazy, all these different colors? All right, here comes the fun part, melding all these colors together. You guys know I love to use my hands, my favorite tool, actually. So as I meld these together, I'm gonna be very careful that I don't over meld so that I end up with one color. I, I want true separation of these colors. This is when short arms aren't a benefit. And you can see here, I'm not really worried that I didn't lay these down in a striation. I can mix them with my hand and get the same effect, even though they just kind of came out of the bottom of the cup. All right, so I've got some voids here. I'm really not worried too much about that because I'm gonna come in with my accent colors and start building onto that. Come around to the front. I'm gonna push that over the edge. Now, I'm not worried about my edges on this particular piece because if you would notice in the very front of the video, this whole piece is gonna sit down into a piece of angle iron. So you're not gonna see any of this edge at all. But I don't want it to build up a big lip. So I'm gonna kinda help that to roll over the edge. Again, be very deliberate in not over melding your colors because we still got some designs to do, and if I over meld at this point, by the end of the project, it's gonna all be the same color. Okay, let's start adding in some accent colors. I do have to say, this is one of my favorite color palettes are all the earth tone metallics. Because to me, they're just, it's just such beautiful colors. All right, here we go. Let's start adding in a little bit of the turquoise. Because if you, if you know me, you know that's my very favorite. But I'm gonna be very light on this because I know the customer doesn't want a lot of, of uh, accent colors. She really wants that earth tone to be the focal point. All right, that's really pretty. All right, I'm gonna come in now with a little bit of the, what was this called, Golden Autumn. Now this looks a lot like our bronze metallic, but it's got a little bit more bling in it. So I'm not really gonna put it where there's already a lot of that bronze. I'm gonna kind of put it over here where it'll kind of stand out on its own. Okay, so I'm gonna wait on the copper. Now there's two things you can do here, guys. You can take a brush, I primed it, you can take a brush and go in here and kind of meld those colors if you want, or you can use your hand again. If you use the brush, you're gonna get a little bit of a softer color, I mean a softer melding pattern than if you use your hand. Again, you guys know me. I love to use my hand. Plus, another reason I really like using my hand is because I can actually feel where I have some surface tension and dry areas. And I'm able, and like, like that, I had a little piece of something in there and I can feel it with my hands. That's one of the reasons I really do like to use my hands. Also, I can feel where some of the epoxy may not be as thick. I think I must have used a dirty cup or a dirty stick or something. I have a few little boogers in there. But if I have an area that's really thin on my material, I can feel that. And I know that I need to add a little more material to that area. All right, so that's really pretty. Let me come around to the front. All right, 
Okay, so that is so pretty. Now what I wanna do is I don't want it to be quite so striated. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm it up a little bit. It's pretty cool in here. I have it at right at, I guess set at 72, but it's cold outside, so maybe I'm just thinking it's cold because you know, 72 to me is cold. I want it to be 82. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna warm everything up. And I'm gonna see first before I do the whole table, I'm gonna see if I like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my brush and I'm very softly gonna cross it to kind of get away with some of the striations and then go back so that they're not all yeah, nah, I don't think I like that. I think I'm gonna go with my gut feeling. I think I'm gonna go back onto my striations here. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of move my hand. Instead of going just straight, I'm just gonna kind of move my hand so that I don't get just all straight lines. Also, I'm really widening out the palm so that I get kind of a different design using the fingers and my palm to actually put that design on the piece. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, very cool. Now, because I do have the ability to tilt this piece, I am gonna torch it a little bit, warm it up, and I'm gonna move it and soften the pattern down. All right, so the reason that I torch is because now that it's heated up a little bit, my uh, epoxy is gonna be a little more fluid, and when I tilt it, I'm gonna get some really cool movements. If my epoxy moves fast, I get what I call little fingers, kind of protruding, and then they'll give me a, a movement pattern that I don't really like, so I like to let it move very slowly. Now see, I like that. Just, that. just that subtle movement right here took away those hard lines. I'm gonna heat it up down here a little bit and move it some more. You can actually heat up one area. If you just want one area to move, like I like this area right here to move, I think I'm just gonna heat that up. Wow, I am really liking this. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of the misty green here, just because I think when I melded it with the brush, I may have taken a little bit of that detail out of it. So I'm gonna bring just a little bit of detail back in there. Okay, let's add some copper. So I think the way I'm gonna do my copper, I'm actually gonna add it as if it were a distinct vein. And the way that you do your stick makes a difference in how it's gonna look. I'm gonna lay it and I'm gonna kinda go straight up and down so that I'm making a fairly small line. But then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna lay my stick down kinda on its side. And it's gonna give me a little bit bigger vein. Don't always start your vein from one side of the table. Alternate it because what's going to happen is where I start my vein, the vein's usually thicker there. So if I always start my vein on one side of the table, it's all going to be thick on one side and then go to a very thin point. So I want to change up the direction. Now I'm gonna start from this end again, but I'm gonna start very thinly. Now you can see as I move up, I don't add any more copper, so that vein kind of fades as it builds back out. Be very conscious so that you're not making zebra stripes. You don't want everything to move exactly in the same striation. Kind of 
break rank a little bit and kind of go across the grain. Now you never want to go in a 90 or a 45. Don't go anything harder than a 45 degree angle across your striation patterns because that is not very pleasing to the eye. All right, so I really like that. Wow, very pretty. It's very important that you take a step back and look at your piece as a whole because if you really kind of focus in on a zone, you lose the whole picture and a lot of times then when you do step back, you have a very patterned finish. So as I step back, my eye goes here and here. So I kind of want to balance this all and I'm going to put just a little bit more color, maybe right here. Just so it kind of balances where my eye goes. There you go. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Have I ever told you guys, I love my job. I truly love what I do. I love bringing you guys content. I love hearing from you when you make something beautiful, especially when you guys send me pictures of what you did. I like knowing that I may have a little tiny, tiny bit of an influence of what you guys are doing. Oh, wow. All right, so what I did is I came back now and I got real distinct with my uh, misty green and I kind of brought it in to the turquoise. So any of you guys know me, you know that my favorite color palette is turquoise and copper. That is my happy, my happy, happy place when I'm playing with these colors. Now I don't want to do every single vein very distinct. Some of them I still want to leave muted, but this big area of copper right here, I'm going to add just a little bit of color. Ooh, yeah. I don't know if y'all get as excited as I do when I do this, but it makes my face smile. All right, add a little bit more right here. I like this little V that this vein is doing. I like that, so I wanna kinda of accentuate that. Now, you can see that I'm in no hurry to finish this because as I'm working, my epoxy's starting to thicken up, which is what I want. But Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy, you've got a good 45 minutes, even an hour in cooler temperature to work this product. So I'm not in the least bit in a hurry and I actually like it when it starts to get thicker because I know that whatever I'm laying down is not gonna move a lot. So tell me in the comments below guys, what what would you do? Would you would you come in with a turquoise like this or would you just maybe leave it all of the, the earth tone browns? Or what accent color would you put in here? Because a lot of times you guys leave me comments on what you would do and then I actually go do it and I love it. All right, I'm gonna come to the front so I've got this real big area here and I'm gonna just add a little turquoise in there and kind of play with it. Ooh, look at that, isn't that pretty? Now this is where someone needs to say, walk away Rhonda, because this could have been a finish on its own quite a few steps ago. But me, I never walk away Rhonda. So let me know guys, where would you have stopped? Would you have brought in the copper accents? Would you have brought in the misty green accents? Tell me what you would have done because I am totally in love. I'm gonna heat it one more time. Now, I don't wanna add a lot of heat at this point because my epoxy is starting to set up. It's, it's been probably a good, from the time I mixed it, it's been almost an hour, so um, I know that whatever I have done here, it's not going to move. So I'm loving it. So if I add a lot of heat at this point, it's going to cause it to go back into a really fluid state and my uh, veins are going to move. So just a little bit of heat and I'll be done. Okay, guys, I'm going to walk away. This is stunning. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to see it set down into the table. All right, so we'll let this dry for 24 hours. I'll come back tomorrow, we'll put a flood coat on it, and then we will come back in another 24 hours 
and we'll roll on the ultimate top coat. Haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do it in gloss or in matte. The uh, table is gonna be powder coated in a matte black. So I'm not really sure if I want this matte or glossy yet. So that decision is still out. Leave me a comment what you would do. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Okay, it's been 24 hours. It's time to sand and get ready for the flood coat. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about dust bunnies and boogers getting into your epoxy. I'm not worried about that at all, especially on the color coat, because I know that I'm going to sand pretty aggressively to get ready to build that mechanical bond, and then I'm going to put on my flood coat. My flood coat, I'm really not worried about dust bunnies because I know I'm going to sand again and I'm going to roll on the ultimate top coat. So if you're doing this in an environment that it's a little bit dusty, don't panic. Uh, now, if you're not going to be applying the ultimate top coat, then you do need to protect your piece either by building like a tent so that you can block it from the dust, turning off your airflow, sealing up the room maybe that you're being in, you will want to take those extra steps. But for me and what we're doing and the fact that I use the ultimate top coat, I'm not worried a bit. All right, so let's get started. Sanding, I've got 220. Now you can use your sander if you want on this. Just be very careful if you're doing a piece where you're going to be sanding your edges. You don't want to do that with a, a rotary sander because you will burn through them. Now here, had a couple of little dust bunnies get in here. You could see this right here. All I'm gonna do, come in here, sand that out. And that'll be ready. You won't see that at all when we pour the flood coat. Now the reason we do this is we need to build a bond between our two layers of, our, of epoxy, our color coat layer and our flood coat layer. Now if you want to create a chemical bond, you don't have to wait 24 hours before you pour your flood coat. You can actually wait about 12, 14 hours to that point where your color coat is very tacky. It's not sticky, meaning it's not gonna pull up, but it feels like sticky tape. At that point, you could come over uh, and pour your flood coat. You're gonna be uh, making a chemical bond at that point. If you wait 24 hours or more, now we're gonna be doing a mechanical bond because we're sanding. I like to do this, I like to have more of a mechanical bond instead of trying to pour it and get in that chemical bond because I'm able to now sand out any imperfections that I have. If I do it when the uh, surface is still sticky and I do have imperfections, I really can't address those. Also, in this particular piece, I'm not worried about my edges at all. In fact, we may even have to come down and very aggressively sand our edges because this whole piece is gonna set down into angle iron and you're not gonna see the edges at all. So I'm not even addressing the edges and worrying about what they look like. Okay, once we've sanded, we'll clean with isopropyl alcohol and we'll be ready to pour. So once you've sanded and you've cleaned uh, the surface with your alcohol, be really careful, don't touch it. You don't want any of those oils uh, from your hands to get onto the surface before you put your flood coat. Okay, so mixing our flood coat. The flood coat is the same product that we used in the color coat, our stone coat countertop, regular epoxy. And we're gonna mix it at three ounces per square foot, which is the same thing that we did on the color coat. Remember, if you're pouring, now that it's getting cooler weather, if you'll warm your jugs up, Prior to mixing, your epoxy will be a lot more fluid and you won't entrain as many air bubbles. Mix for two minutes.
All right, once I'm finished using the mixer for two minutes, I like to take the stick, scrape my edges so that any of that material that wasn't thoroughly mixed with my mixer, um, I can get off and really mix it thoroughly by hand. This will help me avoid any sticky spots once I pour out my material. All right, now comes the secret sauce. I want just a hint of bling, not a lot, just a little bit. So we're gonna be coming in and adding a product from Just Resin. Again, you can get this product from Erica at Artist Till Death. Really pretty, very, very, very fine glitter. We're gonna add just a hair of that. That's all I'm doing. Because I just want it to catch the light ever so lightly. Eh, I think I'm actually gonna do a little more. This is about how I cook, just add it. No, you don't cook like that, Rhonda. What do you mean, Kenny, I don't cook like that? I certainly don't measure. You don't measure. Just and add you a don't, little bit. And you don't add any spices to it. I do. No, you don't. Don't listen to him. Actually, I don't. I'm a terrible cook. All right, let's go. I love putting on a flood coat. To me, it just takes your, your uh, piece to the next level. Look at the glitter, just a hint. At this point, you could choose to use a trial. You could use a roller, but I'll stick with my hands. All right, so once we pour and we spread it out, we're gonna torch it three times, waiting about two to three minutes in between torching. Okay, I've torched it. We'll wait for 24 hours and then we'll decide which one of the ultimate top coats we want to apply. Haven't made that decision yet, whether I'm gonna go with the matte or the gloss. So leave me a comment and let me know what you would do. See you tomorrow. All right, guys, this project is done. The only thing that needs to be done is have the glass put on top, and that's what the owners are going to do. Uh, special thanks to Chuck Conan and his team over at Keiko for doing a fabulous job on powder coating this uh, project. We did it in black matte. That's why we chose to do a matte finish on our uh, epoxy. It just, it, it made it just all come together. So I'm super excited. We did have some issues with filming the process of rolling on the ultimate top coat. Our video footage got corrupted. So if you do want to see how to do that, we'll link a video in the comments below. All right. So all the products used on this table can be found at our website, rk3designs.com or artist till death. Use promo code RK3 if you go to Artist Till Death and receive a promo code. Also, sign up for our newsletter on our website and receive exclusive promo and discount codes for both products and our classes. All right, guys, if I did a good job, give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell for future notifications and subscribe to our channel. We're really doing well and we thank everybody for watching. And guys, until the next video, remember, don't be scared move forward and be creative.